Hey there, YouTube, JT Vector Sigma, the Talking Head, back with another off the shelf episode. But before we get started, I would like to apologize for the lack of a skit in front of this episode. The first two episodes did have skits, and I had planned on doing one for this episode. However, I vastly underestimated the difficulty of making a skit for the book I am going to be talking about this week. I had a really cool idea in mind. Unfortunately, it is currently beyond my capability to produce. I tried, it turned out terrible, I tried again, it turned out terrible, I was going to try again, and then I looked at the clock and I realized, oh shit, I have to get this episode out. So, hopefully, next week I will be back with a skit, and... Hopefully, someday I get the proper props and backgrounds and everything that I can actually produce infinitely better quality introductions than that. So now that that's out of the way, let's just get on with the book, shall we? Today's book is more of a legal drama type book, specifically written by John Grissom, famous for such legal dramas as The Pelican Brief, The Firm, Runaway Jury. All of those have actually been made into movies. Most of his have been made into movies, I think. They're all, they're all really good. But this one, out of all the books, is my favorite. A Time to Kill. The basic idea of the book, Clanton, Mississippi. Small town, shattered by the assault of a young black girl by two white men. People are completely horrified until her father gets an assault rifle and takes justice into his own hands. Then a young attorney named Jake Brigantz has to fight to save his client's life, and then his own. I do happen to think that the movie version of this gives greater drama, better story, all of that stuff. However, the book, I feel, does a much better job creating an entire world. Now, I'm not sure when the book takes place. I think it takes place in, like, the 80s, because it was written in the late 80s. There is a lot of racism and stereotypical stuff, while not appropriate, seems to come from that time. I'm not so sure about the accuracy of the law as it is presented in this book. Hey, it's a book. Artistic license, you know? Also, unlike the last book that I presented on this channel, I don't find all that much to complain about with this one. It has so much character, and every single person that is presented in the book matters. Now, before I go any further, it's that time again, I have to issue a... SPOILER WARNING! Skip ahead to this time up here if you don't want to see any spoilers. However, if you are still here, you don't care about spoilers, let's move on. So the book opens with the assault on little Tanya. That part's kind of hard to get through. Not only because of the actually sickening content, but also because it's the first couple chapters of the book, and the first couple chapters of pretty much any novel are going to be a little bit hard to get through. So the next bunch of chapters is the lawyer, Jake Brigance, going about his business while little Tanya is recovering in the hospital. And then her father, Carl Lee, Samuel L. Jackson in the movie, gets the assault rifle and shoots the two men inside the courthouse. And I'm really glad that this book and the subsequent movie came out when they did, because nowadays this would be completely impossible with all the metal detectors and stuff. Everybody around town is treating Jake differently because he's defending this guy, and the whole town is suffering as the media sharks come in and start burying them. Imagine how that would work out now with Facebook and everything. And then Jake sends his wife and his daughter away because it's getting too dangerous. And this chick, Ellen Rourke, she just comes out of nowhere, offers to help. I find her a bit of a Mary Sue. I mean, she's smart, tough, pretty. And then she gets attacked by the KKK and doesn't really help at all. And then Jake gives his closing argument. And most of it is actually a description of what he said rather than him actually saying it. It's not dialogue. I still don't really understand the convoluted connection that they reveal at the end. Something about the guy who is on the grand jury is somehow he didn't want to indict Carly and somehow he is I don't know if it's his roommate, his lover, his sister, who knows. And she was on the actual jury but nobody knew about the connection and she was the one who got all the others to change their votes somehow by giving a speech that is also described by the guy, and it's essentially what inspired Jake's speech at the end of the movie. So that's out of the way. Let's talk about the characters in here. Ellen, I already implied I don't really like her as a character. As a person, she'd be great. But as a character, like I said, borderline Mary Sue, and she doesn't really add much to the novel version at all. And then there's Carl Lee himself. 
think I don't think he he could be classified as a character at all. He's more of a MacGuffin. He or at least his acquittal versus um, conviction are the things that everyone else in the story is striving towards. One last thing before I stop the spoiler part. I have to tell you that I personally like the vigilante aspect of this. I have always believed that there is a, a fine line, but a line, a difference nonetheless, between breaking the law and committing a crime. A father whose little girl gets her bones broken, her teeth kicked in, hurt so bad she'll never have kids, she can't go to sleep without having nightmares, and she can't even be in the dark without seeing her attackers, and he just takes a gun and sends them straight to hell. I personally hope that any father would be willing to do that. I, vengeance isn't really the Christian thing, but if that if the father that does that goes to hell, there is something seriously wrong with that. So if you stuck with me this long, or if you're skipping ahead to this point, this book can get a little bit tedious with all the legal stuff and all the different switching up points of view, but there's a lot going on. It covers an entire town, and every character, every person in that town is interesting, and they all have a story or an opinion or a mindset that makes them interesting. And not all of them are great characters, but with so many of them, it really, really works. So I give this book a solid 4 out of 5 for all those reasons, and reasons that I kind of said before in the spoiler section that not everybody would want to hear. Let me know what you guys think. Do you agree with all the stuff that I've stated in this review, or do you disagree? I don't know, but leave it in the comment sections, and please, please, please be polite. I mean, I, I know I've said some stuff on here that might be a little bit controversial, but please be polite. Or you can just show your opinion with a simple like and subscribe. I mean, regardless, though, you should probably check out the links in the description box below. They lead all over the place. Don't forget to come in next week for another episode, and also on Monday and Wednesday for my other series. So, I think that's about everything for this one. I am JT Vector Sigma, the talking head. I keep talking, I keep squawking. All you guys have to do is keep watching. Till next time, bye. bye.